Hello and welcome to today's config release, config 14.7. With me is Lukas Eiglesberger from our developer team. Hey, Lukas, thanks for joining us today. Hello, Moritz. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, you and your guys, you, you're working on a new config and we will present it today, 14.7, with uh, some new features. It's always important to uh, reach out the bug fixes, the new features, right directly to our Luxon partners and uh, to the customers. That's the reason why we are yeah, releasing that much um, of the configs and the first thing we want to talk about in this case is the new function block the status monitor function block so Lucas what is this block about why do we need them um, we had some use cases in our campus and for example we had hotel rooms we want to monitor what's the status of the hotel room is is somewhere in the room is is does it need cleaning or mm -hmm. is it empty is it booked and, and for that, we currently didn't have really a block to have a nice overview in the app so that our receptionists can look at the app and see, okay, this room is empty and I can go cleaning. Okay. And uh, the thing with the status monitor function block, it's, it's, uh, it's so universal. You can, you can use it for nearly everything you want. You were talking about a room right now, but you can also use every device you want. Yes, for example, you could use it for surveillance for, to monitor your network devices, for example, at home. So is my server online, is my TV online or are there any problems? Okay, so can we switch to the config and have an eye on the function block, please? So what do we have here on the status monitor? So here we have a status monitor already a bit configured, some, some demo use case. Um, I have three devices I want to monitor, I have an access point, I have a server. And I have a TV. This could be inputs or outputs from a ping function block. So is the server online or is it offline? And in the status monitor with a double click, I can now configure, okay, what do the values on the input mean? Mm -hmm. Zero is offline, one is online. I can define a color. I can define up to 10 value pairs, value text pairs. Mm -hmm. um, and those texts then will be displayed in the app. Okay, and I could also use this then for, okay, I see it in the app, but I could use it for further logic like a notification or uh, what, whatever I want to, to use if this text is displayed then, right? Right, we, on the output side, we have the, the number of, so the, the combined number of how many inputs match those states and you can use this, okay, if, for example, more than three devices are offline in my home, I get a, a mailer and send mm -hmm. it to myself. Okay, for example. And um, how does this look like now in the app? So if we switch to the app, okay, I can now see three devices in this case are online. Ah, okay. And now one is offline. Um, if we go in here, we can see, okay, my TV in the living room was just offline. Yeah. Now it's back online. We have yeah. here also a history. So I can take a look at the history and I can see, okay, oh, something's wrong with my TV in the living room. It yeah. keeps going offline and online. Okay, so I can can uh, use this then to, to check, okay, what's going on here and what do I have to do? Okay, and this is multifunctional, as we talked about, for a couple of rooms. We can use it for devices. We can use it for everything yes, we want. Anything you can think of. Okay, all right. Great feature, Lucas. The next thing is you improved the health check. So um, the health check is a is a powerful tool to to check in the Luxon config if the peripheral devices are in are okay, if the network status is okay. But there was um, something you improved right now. Yeah. So the status monitor was a, quite a slow test. We didn't really put the stress on the system. Yeah. We now increase the stress when doing a link or tree diagnosis and really stress the, the cabling to find any issues that may occur. Okay, so it's, it's more a real stress test yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah. And we also added some statistics uh, evaluation to look at long-term statistics. How long is the device already running? Is, mm -hmm. is there a device which is running only for five minutes and all the others are running for a month? Mm -hmm. And this will be marked orange so that I can see and check. Okay, can we just let the health check in the config run? Yeah. Um, additionally, uh, we added it to the device status. Ah. So now you can start the health check right in here. Okay. For example, when I want to 
do a health check of my link here. It immediately starts and we can already see, okay, there are many packages sent and the test is running very fast. Okay, because maybe it was a problem um, if, if you do, um, if you have problems with your cabling, but you are um, doing the health check before and in this second while the package was sent, it was delivered and everything was, was okay. But maybe 15 minutes later, you recognize, okay, there, there's something wrong or whatever. And with this powerful, more powerful health check, you can now see, okay, if it's just for one second that the package is going through and, and is sent correctly, or if all of the, the bunches of uh, packages are getting to the right device. Exactly, we are now really stressing the system, so if there are some minor issues with the cabling, we should detect it. Okay, all right, so great feature for all partners out there. Um, the health check is, yeah, w one of the most powerful things you can do if you, um, if you're, set up the system if you're ready to go and you leave your customer and then just run the health check and you will see okay if there is a problem or if everything is running good and this is the the, the next thing we were talking about is our energy management it's one it's the most powerful energy management system i think on earth uh, because we can collect so much data we can use this we we have statistics we have the energy flow monitor but from time to time there was um not on our side directly but there were problems with the meter blocks which which problems were, were there yeah, there are several issues sometimes and maybe you have a Modbus device which keeps randomly sending some random numbers. Yeah. You, maybe it's misconfigured, sometimes it's really the device. Um, so you get, for example, for your meter reading a really high number. Yeah. And this totally breaks your statistics and your whole energy management. Yeah. And now the meter blocks detect so, such drastically increases in, mm -hmm. in meter readings and mm -hmm. prevent those values. Okay, so what is uh, concretely the, the meter blocks are doing now? So I think they compare the, the data in, in this case. Exactly. If the meter reading, the new meter reading jumps to a value and the jump is greater than the current meter reading already was, it's, mm. it's a really major increase and, and the yeah. value also must be greater than 10,000. Yeah. And then it's detected as, as an invalid value and prevented. Okay, and you, you will get a notification in this case and you can then check, okay, is this right? Was this as I wanted it to yeah. be or is, uh, is there a problem? Good. The next thing, so improve meter blocks, fine thing. And um, we were talking about the locks on Trust. Uh, trust is a great feature if you want to, if, if you have more uh, mini servers in your project, uh, like we have here on the campus. And this is the um, this is the basis for the next uh, new function block in config 14.7, the um, shortcut. So uh, the mini server shortcut. What was the reason for this function block? Um, the reason was behind this function block is um, if you have a, a large installation like here in the campus. You have many mini servers. Uh, this one mini server is doing the lighting for this area, and, and, and the next area right beside that area is on, a, on another mini server. Mm -hmm. And if you are connected to the visualization, you don't really know how to get to the other mini server. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we added the trust link, but for this case, you really need to know okay, it's on this mini server. Now you can really add a function block. You can put it in the visualization in a category and room, yeah. or you can even put it in a system schematic to see on, on, a, on the floor plan, for example, yeah. and click on that function block and you the app will directly connect to that mini server. Yeah. And that's a good point because it's uh, I sadly missed that at the beginning. It's not only a config release, it's config and app. So shout outs to Tobias Verse and his developer team um, because it, it goes hand in hand if we release a new config. There is also most of the time, uh, of course, a new app because the function blocks won't be uh, visualized. And so, um, Let's jump into the config uh, over and have a look at the mini server shortcut function block. So it's a simple function block. Um, if you have a trust, you can directly select a, a trusted mini server. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have a trust, you can simply enter the serial number and the address of the second mini server and yeah. the app will connect to that mini server. 
Okay, and so let's jump right into the app because we want to, to see it in this case. Okay, this is the mini server shortcut. We place it here, we can name it however we want to, and then we can jump right over. So yeah. we, we, we skip the part of going to the, to the uh, main menu and then switching. Yeah, exactly. And the app now will also display here a small pop-up so that you can simply go back to the previous mini server. Okay, so you will uh, save more time in just jumping between the mini servers and you will know uh, where to connect in this case because uh, the example from the campus you were talking about is like in the restaurant, the Glorious Bastards, right beside of the restaurant is the park area. And if you're in the restaurant as an employee and um, you may want to adjust the, the park illumination or the lightings in the park or something like that, you don't know if you're in stress, if you're in hassle, uh, how to now switch. And now you can see it just into the app. One click is enough and then you're on the on the right mini server you want to work on. And one thing, uh, one additional thing we want to talk about now is the NFC import of key fobs and codes. Um, so one of the main strengths of, of our access system is the easy programming and easy yeah, learning, teaching in the uh, key fobs we have or key cards or whatever. But we learned it from the campus. There is one thing which, when it could get complicated. Yeah, like for example, in our experience zone, we have access cards. Those are unencrypted cards. And we want to give access with such a card once to the experience zone. Yeah. Right now, you had to put in the NFC cards one by one, enter the code and so on. Um, but if you buy such unencrypted cards, you get a, a list of, of the codes those cards have. So you can now import those codes into the config. Yeah, okay, this is the new feature that we can uh, import CSV files uh, right into the um, NFC function block in this case. So let's jump into the config, Lucas, and uh, let's have a look um, what we are seeing now. So this is the dialog of the access, con access controller. Um, we have here a CSV template button, which will open a CSV template and the import button where okay. you can import the, this file again. Okay, and yeah, the CSV template shows what we can see here now, the name, the code, exactly. the outputs you want to uh, give access to, and then you can just save it, re-import. It's, it's a very great feature if you have more than, I would say, five or six uh, key cards or key fobs you want to teach in. So uh, in a private house, of course, uh, you can, you're can you just doing it by hand or with the, with the app in this case. But if you have something you want to do in advance in a big uh, installation, like we have it, for example, here, or uh, if, you, if you're opening, for example, a new office or something like that, and you have a lot of employees or a new supermarket or something like that, and you have a lot of employees, you want to uh, reach the cards out on the on the first day of opening this is a great this is a great feature and last but not least we also have a new update for our audio server uh, so the audio team shout outs to them did also a great job with a lot of bug fixes and uh, this is also what has been done in the Loxon config you uh, shoot a lot of uh, box with the Loxon Seals team and uh, you can find everything as always in the change log. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks Lucas for your time. Have fun uh, working with the new config and we're uh, happy to get your feedback. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment and a subscription on our YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye.